How's it going guys? We have a past level question for ophthalmology for steps one and two. Nearly identical question shows up on a clinical mastery series internal medicine forms, albeit obviously a family medicine pediatrics queue as well. So before we get started, please subscribe to my channel. I really appreciate it. Give the video a like, I really appreciate it. Find me on Instagram at melman underscore medical, M-E-H-L-M-A-N underscore medical, links down below. Find me on Telegram, links to the Telegram group and channel down below and I'll start the clip. So five-year-old girl, she has a two-week history of itching of her left eye, vitals are within normal limits. Examination shows conjunctival erythema and cobblestoning, nasal mucosa is boggy and pale. She has been engaged in arts and crafts at school the past month. Question wants to know the most likely explanation for her presentation. Let's just whip through the answer choices here. Should I say allergic conjunctivitis is the correct answer? So this is what you need to know. This word cobblestoning, when we talk about the tarsal conjunctivae or the nasal mucosa, this is a very buzzy word for allergy. Okay, so this is allergic conjunctivitis. We treat with cold compresses or topical or oral antihistamines. I haven't seen the US MLA assess the treatment, but that's how you treat it. For uh, allergic rhinitis, US MLA does want you to know that you treat with intranasal corticosteroids first over antihistamines. Now, I had one student ask me, oh, I thought cobblestoning was seen in Crohn's disease. You're right. I mean, completely unrelated. It's astute, okay? I mean, if you do a colonoscopy in Crohn's disease, you see cobblestoning, that's colloquially how it's referred to, but you need to know that when we talk about the eyes and ears, the mucosa, eyes and ears, the fuck am I saying? When we talk about the eyes and the nose, this is allergy, okay? Let's just whip through, I'm gonna tell you exactly the high points you need to know, we're not wasting fucking time here. So choice B, chemical conjunctivitis, never fucking seen it, assessed, okay? I mean, this is more just theoretical stuff that shows up in resources. In theory, this could be ophthalmia neonatorum, which means neonatal conjunctivitis, on the first day of life, okay? Uh, classically, due to obsolete use of silver nitrate eye drops, which used to be the prophylaxis for gonococcal conjunctivitis, which now the prophylaxis for gonococcal conjunctivitis in the neonate is erythromycin ointment, topical erythromycin, okay? Wrong fucking answer. Choice C, chlamydial conjunctivitis, wrong answer, albeit very high yield for pediatrics. Now, the highest yield point about this is that not only is a chlamydia trachomatis, D through K, the actual STD uh, contracted vertically via the mother's vaginal canal, but also that this goes on to cause chlamydial pneumonia. It's going to drain through the nasolacrimal duct. So what they're going to do, and also it tends to come in days 10 to 14 onward. Okay, so this is what they're going to do. They're going to tell you a kid is three weeks old. They're going to say about a week, week and a half ago, there was a conjunctivitis that was treated with topical erythromycin. And now there's infiltrates in the lungs with a lymphocytic shift. The reason it's a lymphocytic shift, despite chlamydia being a bacterium, is because chlamydia is obligate intracellular. You need cell-mediated immunity, okay? But they're talking about a conjunctivitis that occurred at 10 to 14 days, and it was treated improperly with topical erythromycin. Now I said topical erythromycin is prophylaxis for gonococcus, okay? But when we talk about treatment of chlamydial, it's gonna be oral erythromycin, not topical, because if you give topical, you're not treating what has already entered the nasolacrimal duct internally. So I'm gonna simplify it, okay? Prophylaxis for chlamydia conjunctivitis is just treat the mom, make sure she doesn't have it while she's pregnant. Treatment for chlamydial conjunctivitis is oral erythromycin in the neonate. Prophylaxis for gonococcal conjunctivitis is topical erythromycin ointment in the neonate. Treatment for gonococcal conjunctivitis is going to be a third generation cephalosporin, typically cephotaxime in peds. Okay, now, wrong fucking answer. Gonococcal conjunctivitis, as I just mentioned, uh, the treatments, but you need to know this comes in prior to chlamydial, classically. We could say the first week of life. Okay, it's not dramatic. Like it's lower yield than chlamydial. They might say a kid is six days old and has a green discharge, yellow discharge from one of the eyes, and that's just going to be gonococcal. And they might list chlamydial, and it's wrong. And you say, well, there's not enough information here. I mean, can't the discharge from chlamydia gonococcus look very similar? Like, how are we supposed to know? I agree with you. And then my response is number one, they if, if they give chlamydial conjunctivitis, they like going on to discuss the pneumonia, as I just fucking said. And number two, 
10 to 14 days onward. All right, so gonococcal just tends to come in in the first week of life. Wrong fucking answer. Choice see Kawasaki disease, wrong answer, albeit exceedingly high yield. So Kawasaki disease can be five days of fever, at least five days of fever. It's an important detail, you know, can cause desquamation of the palms and soles. Not really a rash, but it's often mentioned as a cause of palms and soles rash. It's desquamation of the palms and soles. You can get edema, dorsums of the hands, dorsa of the hands. You can get cervical lymphadenopathy. Injection means redness of the lips, tongue. Get uh, injection of the conjunctivae as well. And obviously this can cause uh, aneurysms of vessels, classically coronary. Treat with aspirin and IVIG, okay? So it's one of the only uh, diseases that we will treat with aspirin in peds, okay? When a kid has a fever, you avoid aspirin due to Ray syndrome. But for Kawasaki disease, it's an exception, okay? We can give aspirin followed by IVIG. Wrong fucking answer. Finally, viral conjunctivitis. Wrong answer, but highest yield point is that you know this is caused by adenovirus, which is a DNA virus. Okay, so DNA, non-enveloped, double-stranded, linear is adenovirus. Step one's pass fail now. It's a bunch of garbage. Okay, but you do need to know adenovirus is just simply DNA. And adenovirus can also cause hemorrhagic cystitis, which would be red urine. So they give you a daycare center, say... Kids got itchy eyes, okay, it's been spreading around. They say, what else could be seen in this patient? Answer is just hematuria, okay, because you can get hemorrhagic cystitis due to adenovirus. Wrong fucking answer. You know the deal, Nick, to make more content. If you like my stuff, subscribe to my channel. And I appreciate your time. That's it.